John's request today was pancakes, which he does not request very often. So I went ahead and cooked the bacon, and now I've got the uh, pancakes cooking in that bacon grease, absorbing those healthy fats. And then he's also getting an egg with this. He doesn't care for eggs, but eggs are important, so he's getting an egg to go with it. So depending on what's in store, we use a variety of maple syrups, but we always use a pure maple syrup. Um, I just realized this one doesn't say organic. I always try to buy organic. Somehow I did not buy organic. Ah, oh, what's the ingredients? Well, at least the ingredient is just maple syrup, but yeah, so we don't use the fancy bottled maple syrups that are full. If you read the ingredients, good luck even having any real maple syrup in those things. So our family, we use this, and I actually love pouring maple syrup like in my coffee or in my tea. Just, oh my goodness. Or if I'm making certain breads or cookies or something for the kids, I actually will use some maple syrup and honey instead of sugar. And the flavor is just out of this world. So if you ever get uh, feeling crazy, you want to try something new, give maple syrup a try. Real maple syrup, not the fake stuff. Double check your ingredients. We're up here in the big in-ground garden. And those are beets that are growing. And over here, we even have carrots that are still growing in this row. It's January 8th, and we haven't had much of a winter, so everything's still growing. It's a good sign. Nice, healthy, young worm here in January. Ew! I was wondering when we would smell it. The first skunk of the year. January 8th, and I can smell the nasty, stinky little thing. So, what am I say? She says, Mom, it stinks. It stinks. Yeah, it doesn't smell good. It's terrible. So, Miss Aurora, she's here chewing her cud, happy as a clam. I feed her and Z separate at least once a day. And as you can see, you guys ate all the leaves. Look it. The only thing left is stems. And that's okay. She says, well, maybe I missed a leaf. No, you didn't miss a leaf. You ate it all. All of it. You can't eat the camera. So anyway, I'll scoop this up. Well, bless you. <laughs> You're crowding my space there, kid. I'll uh, scoop this stuff up here and go give it to the younger goats. They still eat it. No problem. But when you have no toffees, <coughs> oh, well, bless you. When you have no teeth because you're getting old, it's hard to eat everything, huh? Head rub. Barbara's happily cleaning up all the sticks and stems left behind by Aurora and Z. Dragon's enjoying some. Cleanup committee. Younger goats, their teeth still are all good. They can chew. Those older girls, it's harder as they get older. Clearing out the big in-ground garden bed of different overgrowth that the chickens just really won't knock down. And Aurora is not happy that I gave some to Houlihan and BJ. She's not having it. Tonight's dinner is a whole chicken, baby potatoes, and a bunch of asparagus. I covered it in some olive oil, drizzled it over everything, and then I put on a mixture. There's paprika, garlic, ginger, some salt, pepper, let's see, um, onion seasoning, and I'm probably forgetting a couple other things. So just a basic seasoning mix, everything natural. And I love cooking in my cast iron skillet. Like, this is my skillet. Everything's in there together. It's going to go into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And this meal does take a while because of how large this bird is. And because of the potatoes being as, you know, thick. Uh, they're the fullness of a potato. 
But anyway, it, it takes a little while. So this is about an hour to cook of this particular meal. Um, and when I'm done with it, what we don't eat tonight will then go into another meal or two. Uh, soft stuff is that's not meat is set aside for making um, chicken stock. And bones are set aside to be um, roasted. And then uh, they go into being bone broth. So there you go. Another super simple one skillet meal. But it's going to feed the family for not only one night. But I'll get at least two meals out of this big bird. But I mean, honestly, I'll get three. Three and four when you count doing the broth and the bone broth. So right there, I've got some yeast proofing. I'm about to smash in some butter into the flour. It's bread making day. Got to make the bread for everybody's sandwiches and breakfast toast and everything. So making uh, today's loaf is going to be basic white bread with chia and flax seeds added. With the basic white bread recipe, it's really easy to add to it, change that recipe up. So I'm just going to take and take, or I can't talk today. I'm going to take one tablespoon of flax seeds, sprinkle it in there, and about one tablespoon, I'm doing this one-handed, of chia seeds. And just sprinkle that right on in there. And... Anyway, it tastes really, really good in this bread. Um, sometimes there's a seasoning I really like that if you want to make a fun bread, this seasoning right here, focus, everything bagel seasoning. So a tablespoon or two of that in the bread mix is, oh my goodness, divine. So there's another option. And now that I'm thinking about it, I might just toss a teaspoon in here or a tablespoon, I mean, of this seasoning into this bread as well. You can, this, this recipe is so, so easy. Um, you can experiment it with it all the time and always come up with fun new ways to play with it and make it new and different. Check out this dinner. Oh my gosh. My house smells amazing and oh, I just pulled it out now. I know why. Can't wait to eat this. Dinner is out of the oven just in time to put bread in the oven. On the left is regular flour bread for the guys and on the right is a gluten-free for me.